Hi guys and welcome to this week's episode of the In The Hub podcast, brought to you by Playbox Technology UK. In today's episode, we're joined by Fernando Lopez Cisneros, an experienced business development professional and co-founder of Furnext, a company that helps small and medium businesses in our industry to grow and navigate change. Really hope that you enjoy this episode. So welcome to the In The Hub podcast today, Fernando. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. You know, we are here in German with uh, everybody's luck. Yes, yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. That's good to hear, Fernando. So I think we're just going to jump straight into the questions then, uh, if that's okay, Fernando. Fine, fine. Let's keep going. Awesome. So, Fernando, for, for anyone who might not already know, how did you get started in the broadcasting industry? Well, that is a little bit related with my history. I'm Spanish. Maybe some people already noticed that. <laughs> but I grew up in Brazil, you know, and my family moved very early there. So I began my television stations live in Brazil. And that I, that's why I speak a very funny English there. And that I began to work in TV stations because in Brazil, if you are not a middle class rich family, you have to work and study at the same time. And because in television, you have the chance to work at night, night shifts, you know. So yeah, I was yeah. studying during the day and I was going to work on the night. And sometimes it was different, you know. I worked during the day, I studied during the night. So that was giving me the chance to make my money, to pay the private university. And then I begin to... I keep this industry. I didn't done anything in my life which has nothing to do with uh, television broadcasting. You know, and since that, yeah. by 17 years old, 18 years old, until today, you know, I'm working in the broadcasting. And that's a fascinating uh, section of the industry because uh, it's always a technology change, technologies, challenge, and um, I really love very much that. Yeah. Another aspect is when I begin in television, where I like the television, is that uh, it's a tools to creating dreams, uh, expectations to people at home, you know? So they join what the television offering or what the TV program offering. So that particular technology and the message of the content that we put out is what is very uh, very positive for me this is why i'm staying in this industry yeah and it's um it's echoed quite a lot throughout this podcast and some of the guests that we've had on and it's that no one really wants to leave the industry you know when, once people get into the broadcasting industry it's kind of like they're there for the long term isn't it yes <clears throat> you get involved you 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 get emotional with with what you're doing you know to, to be a good professional, you should be 10 years doing the same job. And then you really realize that you, well, you, you know what you're doing, you know. Before of that, you, you start to, you know, you start to, 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 to bumping around and do your job. But after 10 years, and when you are 10 years in the job, you, you or you love him, uh, that job, if not, you are not 10 years on the job. So that is very, very, very appeal why people stay in the broadcasting industry yeah and fernando i know you touched uh quite briefly on it but what is it about the broadcasting industry that keeps you excited and interested it's a technology change you know it's a it's a it's a technology change it's a new way to do things you know every well put yeah, just to put a number no? every three years or five years there is a new technology coming in a uh, new way of uh, produce uh, video events, you know. Uh, I think that we will speak very much uh, during this podcast. I think that uh, that is what is really fascinated and let me stay in this industry uh, forever. No, it's, it's great to hear, Fernando, and I, I completely agree with you there. It's, it's such an exciting industry and it's so fast-paced. 
Um, no, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you on that one. So if we just move over to kind of business development as a topic, Fernando, um, and I know that's an area that you have quite a lot of experience in, um, especially in, in the broadcasting industry. What do you think makes a good business development strategy for businesses in the broadcasting industry? And is that strategy the same for both the small and big businesses or does it need to be altered in any way? Yes, business development is a big umbrella and several things, you know. Uh, People give different names for different sections, you know. You You can do a business development for the product. Some people might call that a product marketing or, you know, product owner, you know, that is a different name. You can do a business development for the product line or the whole product line. You can create some, some strategies that you can do business development for sales channels. You know, you have a, a channels partners that you're creating. That. So that it is a different way of uh, de- define a business development. You know, uh, if we pick up one example, you know, business development for a product or, or different development for a, for the region, you know, uh, I was that in a company which uh, the target was, you know, make the presence of this company and that particular country, you know, well now the people appreciate the technology and finally, you know, selling the product, you know. So that was a business development focus in the company perception on the region, you know, and strategy. So we achieved that. We achieved that with promoting the the, the, the company, uh, doing parks, doing demos, be present in exhibition, you know, and then we creating um, seminars, you know, training sections. And the people was all the time know more about the technology of this company. Yeah. All the time we we done at the end we present the product, and we talk about you know how the product was was made, how developed. And so that is a strategy when the the, the client request you know make the knowledge of the company on the region and finally sell the product. So. It's different. The, the different for 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 companies and companies, you know. Uh, small companies and big companies. It's a big difference uh, when you talk about small companies and big companies in terms of uh, business development for that particular situation. You know, in small companies. Let's see. You know, one product, one product, two product uh, company. You know, they are very much related with a dealer network, a dealer network who will defend the product to the end user, you know, bring the product and end user. You, the company should have a correct and appropriate dealer who the product portfolio they already have, you know, your product or the product of this company, you know, we add on value of what they have, you know, or by reinforcing that Product portfolio that the dealer had because the dealer working, you know, not only a black box business, but they are a small system integrators, so they can have the power of bundle. Uh, when you work with the big companies with uh, you know, say four or five product lines, you know, uh, uh, then it is important. Also, the dealer is not a question. The dealer is important, but it's important that the product have, you know relationship with another product lines that there is a there is a a, a, a connection um, an operational side engineering side between the product that you try to introduce and another product lines you know because again the dealer or the sales person big big companies mostly selling direct you know they they have a more bundle power to do that so the product strategy for small companies and the big companies, you know, uh, differing very much between of that, you know, that is some cares that uh, we as a product development have to focus when we went to launch the product or bring the product to the front. So Fernando, just, just kind of moving parallel to that, are there any kind of common misconceptions or errors that are made by kind of small businesses 
um, especially in our industry, when they're trying to grow in, in this way? Well, you know, growing is something very... It's a bit of a mystery, very, isn't it? Sometimes? Very good. Yeah. It's a mystery. Everybody wants to grow. Everybody wants to make more money. Yeah, you know? yeah. The ambition is, 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 is very big. I will take one example here, you know, and don't take me the numbers, by, but just the concept, you know, of that. Pick up a small company, okay? A small company is five to six person company, okay? And then you have a revenue of uh, five millions. It can be six, seven, depending on how successful it is. You already have this company for three years. Okay? So, what's happened typically in this company? So, the CEO, the CFO, the marketing director, the log- logistic manager is the same guy, is the owner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So then you as a business development, you have to go there and start to separate these sections. And I believe uh-huh. the people are capable, you know, and do several of these sections pretty well, you know, but this guy is not Superman, you know. So, it, you know, then, then, then he coming with ambition of grow because the product is, is good. The product can regenerate two times more sales they are doing now, this is 5 million. They can do 10 million. But there is one consideration he has to take care of. The people behind the company. The people who make this product successful. And he realized that to make, let's see, 50% more revenue next year, he need to put more for, for person. And that is the beginning of the mistake. Because the culture of the company, the way they relate between them, the way they talk with the, between them, the way they work between them is part of what the product is successful. Putting more yeah. people is not a direct line between, you know, more people, more sales, you know. So the steps should be thought, should be considered. Don't be ambition. Grow, but grow with sense. See how your organization is reacting yeah, to new members. And then when you become bigger, maybe you start to put Salesforce, you know, uh, Jura, or another monitoring monitoring uh, software to control the people to control the activities and then the company start to get cranky start to slow because you are growing too quickly so don't stop to think about grow your company because you are making benefit for the people who work in your company too but Measure the steps. Measure the steps because the way you go up very slowly, you go down very quickly. That's a very good point. So, so be careful. This is very, very careful. Be a be no said now. I don't want to, to grow more because I start to damage the organization. Yeah. Or they are not prepared. Okay, I will open another product line. I will begin another section, another group, you know, and grow up that group. But know the limitations of your team or your people, yeah, and the cultural behave of that of that people, yeah. Because it's there is not a, there is not a successful product if not there are successful team behind that. Yeah, hundred percent. I completely agree with that. I think that's some fantastic advice, Fernando. Um, and it only speaks to your kind of expertise, obviously, in business development. Because um, I, I was just thinking before we, we kind of jumped onto the podcast, yeah, it, it must be really difficult for small business owners to kind of make that leap and and give away some of their you know creative control and some of their control. But if if you know growth is the mindset, like you said, 
if it can be done carefully, it, it's just a, it's necessary, isn't it? They're going to have to kind of outsource some of those those yeah. things they do themselves, yeah. or uh, or risk burning out, which is uh, which can yeah. be really catastrophic, yeah. can't yeah. it? I saw many companies, which the 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 CEO of the company was the owner. And they didn't go yeah. too far, <laughs> they, you know. It's this is it's a challenge. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge for the person because he should know what is a CEO and what is the owner. He should put himself in the position. How I will explain to the owner of the company what I'm doing. But this is a person because the owner so. Sometimes he misjudged himself. He said, I do because I am the owner. You know? <laughs> and then, 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 it's, it's, then is the beginning of the, the way down, you know, because yeah. Yeah. That, that, uh, that is no easy position. And like you said, Fernando, the way down can often be quick, can't it? <laughs> the way down is much, much quicker than go up. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and like you said, yeah, to echo that, it's, it's about being careful, isn't it, in, in you know, how, yeah. how you adopt these people around you. Um, taking on these responsibilities and, and measure it every step of the way as well. Yeah. Um, so, Fernando, if we'll just move on to Fur Next, which is obviously your new venture that you've set up, could you just tell our audience a little bit more about Fur Next and, and what the company kind of seeks to achieve? Well, Fur Next is a concept uh, that I've already been thinking about for many years, you know, as I went to, you know, I don't know how many exhibitions around the world all these years, you know. I see these uh, small booths, you know, with very dynamic and very attractive people, and they think that idea is a great idea of the world, and they have a lot of mark segments. And one of the things they do is they pick up most anyone who went to be a dealer as a dealer. And then the business doesn't grow. And they have, let's see, a hundred dealers. And that is one of the mistakes of these small companies have, you know. They think the dealer is a dealer and they will do business. There is much more to sell a product. To sell a product, you have to make easy for the dealer self. You have to make it attractive to the dealer self. You have to you have to bring a good margin for them. The product should have synergy with what he's selling. Because he go to the client and he talk with a light director and he's selling a deconverters. So this is where I begin, you know, seeing these people with a great concept. But in the moment, they went to implement it, yeah. Uh, it's not that simple because I have a new product and I have a great product, you know. I will, I will do that, you know. So this is what Fernex is a little bit, you know. Bring your product, your idea, to the correct way to be attractive to the client resolve the problem of the client how I present the product that I'm resolving the your problem or I improve your workflow don't tell me it's cheaper because this is a this is a this is a wrong concept you know it's a wrong concept you know so cheaper everybody have different concept of cheaper you know so you know, so that is what business development job, one of the business development job is. Bring the product and understanding the client and the workflow of the client, you know. And, and this is one of the sections. Another section is uh, some companies, for example, which is have a talent people, uh, right, in several places, you know, but they went to go international. Oh, you know, I have a dealer in, in Malaysia. Oh, he's great. They don't, they don't understand, you know, why the price positioning, 
the cost of ownership of the, your product, the taxations they have to, 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 to have, is not how much you sell, how much he have to pay to have your goods and your territory. You know, so that is the cost of ownership. And then the cost of ownership for the end user, of what course, kind yes. of people he have to have, uh, what kind of expertise he have to have, you know. So pricing positioning is also one of our tools, you know, to assist uh, middle and small companies, you know, to bring to the market, you know, and to understand that. So this kind of activities is what we, we, we are focused, you know. We don't want to be a partner for the rest of the life. We want to drive you, you or your company or your start company to the correct way, you know, and that you can go away and you understanding the steps you know, that is needed to be a successful product. Hundred percent. It's it's sometimes it's very easy to just think, oh, we're, as a small company, we'll, we'll go out, we'll figure it out as we go along. You know, we'll we'll just try and grow really quickly and and get our product into as many different territories as possible. But it's it's yeah, you can't underestimate the value of of coming to experts, you know, like you guys that that can you know kind of path out the way forwards and map out the way forwards um, for small businesses. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, you see, you have to depend on the product. You have to make a uh, user friendly, you know. Uh, if, for example, if you go for countries which are the English, it's not uh, a strong no on the region or on the level of the people who are using that equipment, you know. So you have to make a user friendly. So you will, you know, because the manager buys the equipment, the operator operated the equipment. If this guy kill your product, you never will sell anything anymore. But for example, in some regions, you know, the manager who was well-educated person and everything what you like, you know, he's go well with the English, you know, what the operator, you know, is the guy who make a technical education in the region, you know, he's not that keen on the, and that you have to make it easy for them. So this is a small details that we go on, you know, and make a successful product. Yeah. And a particularly a product which is don't come in from the big five, you know, a product who come in from the, from the middle industry, yeah, you have to make friendly to be used. So this is kind of, you know, what uh, Fernex with experience these people have it's not only me; it's another another colleagues, yeah, which is uh, which can which can uh, um, help starters in the small companies. Yeah, and I, I know for sure there's a lot of, of exciting ideas and, and fresh new kind of innovations coming out of small companies um, as well that that really are ripe for, for growth and and yeah, incorporating into our industry on a a, a much bigger scale. Um, so Fernando. Uh, it's a question we ask at the end of every podcast, um, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts on it. What do you envision for the future of the broadcast and media industry? And, and we usually ask guests to keep it to one word um, and then obviously expand on it afterwards. But but what do you see as a future for our industry? Great. Fantastic. Hey, I like it. <laughs> Positivity. <laughs> okay. Okay. I like it. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know. One of the exciting things of this industry is the constant change, you know, at the different fronts. Yeah, you know? let's let's talk about, you know, at 4K. 4K is a pass for the industry who develop a product who take two years time to develop a product, a year and a half. It's a pass. It's already it's already done. Yeah. The industry is pushing 8K. Japan, Korea, and strongly China push the 8K. You talk about a population, the middle class in China is 500 million. It's bigger than US and Europe. It's a lot of people. <laughs> it's a lot, it's a lot of, of people. people. Yeah. It's a lot of TV sets. 
is a lot of things, you know. So how this will come? How do we be, the producer workflow will show up to attend that kind of screams. How this, we, we still are give the first steps. But I, I, don't have a, I don't have a doubt that, that in four or five years, 8K will be in the house of many, many people. Oh, 100%, yeah. Yeah, so this is, this, is, this is one trend that is already, you know, exciting. Then we go to the, the technology, cloud. Cloud is all over the place. The AWS make a wonderful, a, a wonderful um, showcase, you know, they are already 15 years doing cloud. They celebrated this week, you know, there's a whole whole week of seminars of AWS over, over this uh, 15 years on the cloud, you know. Google running behind, Microsoft is like crazy behind, you know. Uh, the Chinese, you know, is also looking to come very strong. There's no way. Today, remote production, editing, color corrections, everything. Everything is on the way of the cloud, you know. So that is another change in the industry. Fiverr. We already, the two continents, Europe and America, we have tons of fiber running behind all over the place, you know. Africa, they are putting extremely uh, active um, fiber for the whole uh, Africa, subterranean, uh, you know, underwater fiber for all the countries there, you know, so they are continuity there, you know. South America, the same. So this, this in the next five, five, let's see, five years, you know, that will grow in an in exponential way, you know. So that is, that, that what make cloud uh, a solution. They talk, everybody talk about latency, latency, latency. The latency is a problem that we had before and the people was concerned. Today, important is the audio and the video and the metadata coming at the same time in the same place. Latency is not more an issue. It's something that we have to leave. You know, we existing and we cannot get rid of that. It's a physics, you know. So I believe the cloud is one of the big differentiating things that happen in, the, in our in our industry. And another thing that I think we change very much, you know, is what we call TV programs. The typical TV programmers that you sit there and sit at the BBC and watching, you know, this guy, this thing is the day count, you know. YouTube, Snapchat, TikToks, they are and then I, I will change that for TV program with it. Video events, the video events of 20 seconds or 50 yes. seconds or five minutes or six minutes. But people will not stay longer than 10, 12 minutes watching one video event. There will be change. Look at this generation that we talk about today. And five to 10 years, this generation is not more the generation today. We'll be in the thirties, we'll be 35, and they grow up watching video events. We have a 50 minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and that is what they will like to continue seeing. Uh, and the next ones who come in will be similar like that. So this, uh, this traditional long events, you know, TV programs will be replaced by video events, yeah. uh, media events, you know, short, 
content, the, con the, the content of the programs or the events, very strong, very reduced, but that will be a change because our society will request change for this traditional way to do. I don't talk about football, soccer, they call America's football, sport events, you know, this is a live emotion, you know, this everybody's holding a little bit longer, you know, but how many times I don't watch the game and I go to YouTube to see the first shot. Catch the highlights. And I go, and I go, yeah, and I go in 10 minutes, I saw the whole, I mean, all the boring stuff is already gone. I go <laughs> where the emotions are, you know. So then I'm satisfied. Yeah. If I'm, if, if it's somebody I like to see, I like to see Messi play, then I, uh, then I stay to see. But if I went to see the game, you know, the Premier League, you know, it's a great, it's a 50 minute event because the guy hit another one, they hit another one and then he make a goal, you know, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's kind of dynamism, you know, to, to watch. If you went to see somebody else, then you, you watch the whole thing. So the way of we see programs is also on the way to change, you know, for the next generation. And that is, uh, I think, another change that's coming in the industry. Yeah, I think it's definitely a thing with our generation where all of this kind of short form content that we've been consuming uh, in large part, thanks to the social media platforms that you were, you were talking about, like YouTube and, and TikTok. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that does carry across to, you know, the more traditional kind of TV landscape um, yeah. and whether TV schedules from now will, will just be short 10 minute blocks. Uh, you know, uh, I, I agree with you. I think when it comes to the mm -hmm. longer form events like sports and, and football matches and, and particular things like that, um, our generation can be tempted in to watch the whole thing if there's going to be a sufficient payoff. But like you said, there's yeah, there's there's some programs one hours, two hours long that that people in you know the younger people just aren't going to stick around for, are they? They go and watch the highlights instead. You can believe that this young generation, like you, you know, not like me, but the yeah. same thing, you know, you think you believe I stay two hours to watch, you know, a game, exactly. a game who goes zero zero, a game who, who you know, nobody is have the red yeah. card or nobody break the leg, you know. That's just, you know, at the end yeah. you go. So I waste two hours of my life, you know, watch the thing. So if you went to see a singer or you went to see a player, that 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 is another focus mm -hmm. right, for the event, you know. But yeah, people definitely. watching TV for emotion. If there is no emotion, a sad emotion or a happy emotion, you know, or satisfy emotion like a discovery, you know, oh, how intelligent I am after this one yeah. hour, you know, I learned yeah. something, you know, but there's so many things to do in these two hours that if I'm not very focused on that, I go to see the highlights. <laughs> yeah, and I can't blame you, Fernando. Um... So, yeah, I, I, I think the kind of concept of change has been quite a recurring theme throughout this podcast, um, you know, for, for both good and bad reasons. Uh, how difficult do you think it is to, to navigate change in our industry for, for the small and medium companies um, that you've had experience with? Well, I think the small companies that have the benefits of to be small. Technology changed very much. And the tendency today, you know, <clears throat> our companies and the small middle companies, most of them, you know, as a soft and defined platforms, they come in with a softer package. Yeah. On the set and the and the traditional industry, you know, is a hardware defined equipment. It's true that for every software you need a hardware. If not, you can play the software, you know. That is, that is true. But today there are so many alternatives to plug softwares. You have the, the cots, you know, you, you get the devices that are standard in the industry or almost the standard industry that you can play your, you can play your software and start to work as a hardware dedicated. You have uh, you have uh, boards with uh, 
PCI Express, you have with IOs. So less and less you need a dedicated hardware. The benefits of the small companies, you know, is that they can shift much quickly for one environment to a next environment. Yeah? For the hardware oriented to just software oriented company. The big companies are much slower in that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know, uh, there is a Canadian company, uh, I have to say the name, there's several ones there, you know, <laughs> 100% oriented, let's see, 100% over, over, over doing, but 80% oriented in hard work hardware yeah. company yeah. and if you go to the website jobs website to this company i count another day they are looking for 25 new engineers yeah. with 23 yeah. are software defined people so that change for them you know is harder because they have a legacy they have to maintain their products. They, they, they have to maintain the, the, the hardware at least five years. So that companies are suffering that transition, what's happened today. So is yeah. the chance for the middle and size company, you know, look at that platform and make a software oriented, you know, a software oriented company. And that yeah. is the benefits that I see today for the middle and the small companies. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's important to future proof yourself whilst you're in a position to be able to do so quickly, like you said, um, and not have to upscale all of your operations across the world. Yeah, you know, keep it close to home and and get future proofed. I think. Um, yeah. So thank you for obviously answering all the, the questions that we had for you, Fernando. Um, is there anything exciting in the pipeline for you? Or, or with uh, next that you can tell us about today? I, I unfortunately I cannot talk very much about the clients we are we are we are working, you know, because this kind yes. of strategy yeah. confidentiality. Yeah. We don't sign we, we don't sign any any DAs, but we are professional enough to to respect uh, the company who, who ask us to to support. We have at the moment uh, this is a company which is, was launched in February. The moment we are working with two uh, startup companies, you know, uh, and complete different mark segments, you know, and that, uh, you know, look very, very good. And the moment uh, our challenge is the people know this company existed, you know, it's not you have a good idea, but nobody knows, you know, it's, 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 it's the case of a small company. So my task now is uh, make that uh, Fednex uh, more no in the industry and then we're looking for some <clears throat> uh, advertising campaign and the magazines and then you know we we're looking for the starbucks uh, concept one no mm -hmm. another one tell to another one another one not to and another one yes. tell to another yeah. one you know and um, that's the target uh, for fednex help and do the the challenges for small and middle companies you know that challenge make our challenge and together you know bring the company where it should do our intention is not be forever our intention is show the guy show the directions you know show them the way and then they develop by themselves we don't want to babysit any company or you know we went to work together, make that challenge our challenges, and let them go away by themselves. Yeah, no, it, it sounds like a, a really exciting start, Fernando. Um, and I'm sure you're getting stuck in and, and really involved with it. And it just sounds like quite a lot of fun at the moment. Um, and, and, and best of luck, obviously, with, with all the awareness activities and the marketing activities as well um, that you guys will be carrying yeah. out. And I, I think word of mouth in this industry is particularly important, like you said. Um, and having that kind of Starbucks mm -hmm. concept of, of you know, people passing along, passing along the name and stuff like that. Um, so how can people get in touch with you or Fernex to find out more about what you guys are up to and, and what kind of services you guys provide? Yeah, the, we have a website, fair, 
from Fernando, fair. Next is always my concept. I go ahead, fairnext.com. And um, you can find my WhatsApp number. You can find my, uh, uh, my email address there, you know, uh, in the LinkedIn, uh, Fernando Lopez. Uh, Fernex is there. You can also reach me by the LinkedIn. So, so if anyone is interested, uh, please do and go and re- reach out to Fernando uh, through those avenues. So, Fernando, thank you very much for obviously coming on to the podcast today and answering the questions that we had for you. Uh, it's been it's been really great. I really appreciate. It. I really appreciate this chance for you guys uh, giving the time. You know, and uh, you know we are here ready for next challenge awesome right thank you very much fernando you're welcome